Let's talk about access lists. There are many reasons for using access lists. In general, you use access lists to define traffic. The most common purpose is to filter traffic. When we normally use access lists, we do that to filter traffic inbound or outbound on our device. We use access lists in routers, switches, and firewalls. They look almost the same in all types of Cisco devices. Except for filtering traffic, we can use access lists for specifying traffic when it comes to route maps, route filtering, defining traffic for model or policy framework, and many other purposes. But the most common is to filter traffic. Let's talk about that. When it comes to traffic filtering in the ASA firewall, each traffic flow is processed once. That means that for each session, the first packet in the flow is processed through the firewall. If I initiate traffic from my client on the internal network out to the google.com web server, the first packet outbound from my PC to the Google web server is a SYN packet. That traffic is filtered through the firewall in the access list inbound, normally in the inbound access list on my inside interface of the firewall. If the initial packet is permitted in the access list, the traffic will be accepted and passed through the firewall, and the session will be placed in the session table of the firewall. That means that return packets and further packets in the same flow will be passed without being processed in the access list. Since the firewall is stateful, you don't need to open access list in the other direction, even though return traffic is coming inbound from internet back to the internal network, and there is an access list for blocking inbound traffic on the outside interface, that traffic will not be processed by the outside access list. Each traffic flow is only processed once in the direction of the first packet sent in that session. The access list is processed from top to bottom until there is a hit. That means that if the access list have five lines, line one will be processed and see if it matches this current packet. If it is, it will not be processed anymore. If there is no hit on line one, it will continue to process line two and three and four and so on until all lines are processed. If no lines are processed, there is a default access list line in all access lists that says block the traffic. That line is default and invisible and is called implicit deny. For each access list line, there is always only two outcomes, either permit or deny. If we are filtering traffic, permit means accept the traffic, and if there is a deny, traffic will be blocked. In the ASA firewall, there are two types of access lists. There are both standard access lists and extended access lists. When it comes to filtering traffic, you will never ever use standard access lists in the ASA firewall. You will always use extended access lists. The reason is simple. In standard access lists, you can only match on source address. In the extended access list, you can match on source address, destination address, and ports. That's a huge difference. You can use a standard access list in an ASA firewall when it comes to VPN filtering or split tunneling for VPN and so on. But when it comes to filtering traffic going through the firewall applied on interfaces, you will always use extended access list. Since an access list is processed from top to bottom, it's important if you have overlapping lines that the more specific entries are first in the access list and the more generic entries are in the bottom of the access list. I will soon show you an example of that. There's also a recommendation that access list for filtering in the firewall should be applied inbound on each interface. All interfaces in the firewall should have one access list applied inbound. 